welcome to The Nature of Healing, a sanctuary of sound where we delve into the profound mysteries of life, love, and the journey towards wholeness. I am your host, Jen Shepard, and this podcast is brought to you by Bolts of Love. In each episode, we will embark on a voyage through the vast ocean of existence, navigating the currents of our lives and seeking shores of understanding. We will explore the landscapes of love, the scales of the mountains of our minds, and traverse the valleys of vulnerability. Our journey is not merely a physical one, but a voyage of spirit a pilgrimage of the soul towards the sacred sanctuary of wholeness. It is a dance with divine, the symphony of the self, where every note resonates with the rhythm of existence. So join us as we step into this space today of exploration and enlightenment, where every path leads us closer to our true selves, and every step is a step toward healing Welcome again to The Nature of Healing, where we celebrate life, love, and the pursuit of wholeness. Today's journey begins with living the truth we understand, and a quote from Eric Butterworth. I am confident that there are non-Christian students on the quest who may be reading these lines. To you, may I say, Don't fight the words Jesus or Christ. It is an idea, the spiritual truth, the divine relationship that counts. You can lay hold of the Christian dynamic even if you mentally substitute the words force, genius, potential, or any concepts that are meaningful to you. Startling as it may sound, A man may hug Jesus to his breast in emotional adoration and still miss the dynamic that Jesus came here to reveal, while another man may deny that Jesus ever lived and still catch the essence of his heart and great truth. As for me, fellowship with Jesus is invaluable in helping me to learn of him and to know the truth as he knew it. But I am convinced that accepting Jesus is not indispensable to the student on the quest. Eric Butterworth wrote that in Discover the Power Within You. Unity teachings emphasize that living the truth is an ongoing journey. It's a journey of self-discovery, of growth, of spiritual development. It involves aligning our lives with spiritual principles, practicing mindfulness and presence, and serving others with love and compassion, leading each of us to greater peace, to joy and fulfillment. We are truly asked, to live fully in the truth we understand in the present moment. And that's what Eric Butterworth was trying to get across, even though he uses and associates with the words Jesus and God and Christ. The truth is not only in those words. We know that this present moment is not the past or the future. It is the now. Our past experiences and learning and spiritual work or lack thereof will all aid in the interpretation of this very present moment. We all start out understanding our life in a multitude of places. We all start where we start just as babies. We all start as babies. We all start out very dependent on caretakers and parents. We believe that our caretakers are capable of anything and everything. They keep us fed and clothed. And in the best of circumstances, they also keep us emotionally well-fed and secure. 
somewhere along our development, we realize that we are individual. We are human. We're not merely an extension of our caregivers. This moment of awakening is a new paradigm in our development. We start to want to do things ourselves. We want to make decisions on our own. We want to pick out our own clothes and put on our own socks and feed ourselves our own food. We start to push boundaries of what we're capable of. All through our lives, we have awakenings, moments of realization that are beyond the set circumstances that we have been making choices and living until that present moment. We always live the truth that we know until we are willing to take an awakening moment, an awareness moment, and work with it, with everything in every aspect of our lives. In Discover the Power Within You, there is a quote that says, a starting point in spiritual realization is a right understanding of that one designated as the Almighty. And Wilbur says, more specifically, everybody, including me, has some important pieces of the truth. And all of those pieces need to be honored, cherished, and included in a more gracious, spacious, and compassionate embrace. It is a tremendous leap for some of us to move beyond the paradigm of our past and into the present. It is also a tremendous leap to integrate the realization that, that this leap, any leap, will take on many different viewpoints and many different explanations. Our perspectives widen, they broaden, they change. We realize more. We realize that the allness and the one that we are simultaneously manifesting, manifesting, we are also expressing, we are that one, we are also an individual. And within that, we have the ability to witness creation from that oneness perspective and also from the individualized perspective. Part of growing up in this awakening is healing. It's healing the need to keep a set comfort zone. It's Healing the need to keep a set vocabulary and a set understanding of our words. Those that are working with awareness and awakening experiences work on subscribing to more notions than what was available to them before or what they were willing to take on before. They start to take on the realization that we are coexisting as divinity. And when we come to that place and we rise up to that, we start to recognize the cooperation that's possible with all of us. The cooperation of sharing those viewpoints and merging them. That takes work. It takes willingness. It also takes understanding when we have these little awareness moments and awakening moments and when we have the, the larger ones and knowing that larger ones don't need to be totally present for us to understand and be in the presence of the divinity in our everyday lives. I was asked several years back, to lead a workshop on healing for a group of individuals that wanted to learn more so they could share their healing and their understanding of healing with others. They wanted to know how to be in the presence and the power of spirit and to share that presence to help others to move into healing. The first 20 minutes with this group was extremely rough for me. 
I knew there was resistance to what I was saying. I knew there was resistance to me. I was using vocabulary that I was comfortable with. I used the word prayer and the word God in reference to our connection and to the feeling of that moment of healing and that expression of compassion. After a break and a short time for me to remove myself and contemplate, I went back to the group and I had a conversation with them and I asked them in which way they felt I was not connecting to them. They talked about how they did not believe in God, the word God, as such, and that they were all carrying around varying sorts of trauma from their traditional Christian upbringings and their organizations. The idea of prayer for them was somebody speaking and asking to a God. None of them felt the need to, quote, pray. And after I listened to them, I asked if I could explain the basic concepts again. I reworded what I had said using the words spirit for God and the word healing for prayer. I talked to them about the alignment with feelings and the affirmation of purpose. We did exercises in, quote, relaxation, in, quote, breathing, in, quote, mindfulness and gratitude. I spoke with them about connecting to symbols to help them focus and that of their intentions. The energy, the base teaching for me was still in the roots, in the foundation of the five-step prayer process taught in unity. Was the recognition of divinity and Christ essence and light within me and within each of them and within all of those people they wanted to help through learning more about healing and how all of those lights flow into each person through the love, the affirmation, and the willingness to be in the silence of creation. We talked about how spirit was everywhere and everything and would move with sincere alignment with our mind and our heart. The same idea of our divine mind's response to thoughts and then actions to manifest love and healing in our world. It's the same feeling, the same idea, the same expression. Using different words. I did not water down at all when I was teaching. I did not circumvent the divinity and the Christ nature in anyone in front of me. I did honor the vocabulary that was the truth that each of these people who asked me to come and share understood and knew that that was their present. That was living the truth in that moment. Years later, some of this group are still in contact with me. And the conversation around words and vocabulary, we've had many, many times. And each, I love it because they share with me how they were able to move into spaces with others to honor that person's truth as they knew it in the vocabulary they were using. So maybe when they were offering to sit for prayers and healing with them, they used the words God with them, or they used the word energy or flow, depending on what would best be in the presence of the truth in that very moment. This can happen with all of us. All of us. Part of growing up and the healing of our own lives comes from integrating the understanding that we all will translate words into definitions that we understand in that moment. The definitions of words in the dictionary do not always give light 
to the way those words land on people's ears and in their hearts. The understanding and acceptance of this reality of our existence goes a long way. When we are experiencing any type of activating or triggering moment with another, we may take a break and ask that person to explain or define what they mean by a certain phrase or a certain word. In the example given earlier, the word prayer could easily be substituted for the word healing. And the word God could easily be substituted for the word spirit to avoid any misunderstanding or activating or triggering moments. We were all feeling and knowing and talking about the same concepts. We were using different words to get ourselves there to understand it within our own nature and to try to explain that to others. The beauty of unity is unity. It is the principle of recognizing each person is where they are at at any given time and understand what they understand and use the words and actions to express that understanding. And all of it is beautiful. Each person is individualized consciousness, an individualized aspect of divinity. We understand that the word divinity may be expressed in other words as God, force, spirit, divine mind, divine intelligence, the witness, the allness, the universe, Christ, Christ essence, Buddha nature, great spirit, Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah, energy, the one, and so much more. Unity is about the only title, the only title that I can produce, that I understand, that will encompass and embrace the diversity, the integral nature of allowing and recognizing such a beautiful swath of expression. There are many that find the beautiful expression of life through the language of science, of art, music, gardening, of everyday life. And some of them never, ever use a quote, spiritual language. Ken Wilber says, the Enlightenment was an attempt to liberate myth and base truth claims on evidence, not just dogma. But when science threw out the church, they threw the baby out with the bathwater. The spiritual community in present times <laughs> is in the danger zone of also throwing the baby out with the bathwater. The acceptance of diverse ways in which people process, become aware, heal, and move on to their next phase of understanding is not for a weak-hearted institution. It is also not for everyone. Not everyone will have the tolerance of nature or the maturity of recognition that we do not know everything. We do not know if one person's perception is ex and experience is more correct than another. We do not know if one person's choice of vocabulary is more acceptable than another's. We are willing to recognize that unity means being willing to do the work of self-discovery, of self-healing, of self-transformation, and supporting each other in this process of blooming into compassion and love. It means being unified in the process of being, of living, of supporting, and of healing. It means taking the principles of truth from the past and raising them up to the best present understanding that we have available. Eric Butterworth said, that Jesus had a unique concept of God. To him, God was not an object of worship, but a presence dwelling in us, a force surrounding us, and a principle 
by which we live. This unique concept is over 2,000 years old now. This unique concept has grown up to the present. Do we allow that concept from 2,000 years ago to grow up to what we know now? Are we birthing the understanding and the expression that it means today? The divine nature of the universe, of everything, is not driven by a personality, any personality. It is the unending, unwavering aspect of isness of creation. And within that witness, oneness, there are principles. And we are the creation. We recognize the principles as part of the unchanging nature of spirit, of divinity, of God, of universe, of all, with a capital A-L-L. Charles Fillmore said, there is but one power. We use it as we will. If we send it out by our thoughts and word and hate, it destroys. But if we send it out in love, it builds. There are not two powers, but two ways of using power. God is not merely dwelling in us. We are divine. We are the universe made manifest, working itself out through creation. We are the light. We are the destiny. We are the peacemakers and the mode of transportation for compassion. Being compassion does not require a set use of words and a set use of definitions for those words. Words are a very cumbersome mode of communication made necessary by our humanity. Words are symbols for what we would like to convey. Compassion is the energy of unconditional love. Energy is what is recognized by both physical and non-physical creation. The energy is the matrix that both connects and is the oneness. Feeling appreciation, feeling peace, feeling caring, and moving those feelings into being hope and being unity is what will transform the world. Not what our human perceptions care to label that energy. Ken Wilber says the simple fact that we live in a world of conflict and opposites because we live in a world of boundaries. Our boundaries are shaped by our unique experience within our physical reality. Compassion, compassion allows the rigid boundaries to soften, to glide and even become porous. This does not mean we lose the definition of ourself. It doesn't mean we lose what we know in the presence. It does mean we expand the definition. We allow for the integration of the little bits of truth held across the boundary. Boundaries no longer hold the meaning they did before. We move into wholeness. We heal community. We merge our individual individuality with and into oneness. We heal the need for everyone's bit of the truth to be the total truth. We heal the need for our perception to be the only perception. Healing and moving into wholeness are a step in finding truth with a capital T. It is the broader and wider perspective. It is blurring the boundaries and being comfortable with the grays that result from that blurring. Please join me in a short reflection. If you are able and you're at a spot that feels comfortable, you're not driving, I invite you to take this moment to relax with all of this discussion. To take a moment to inhale, moving your shoulders up to your ears, 
and exhaling with a sigh. One more time. Releasing all tension, all stress, all fear. Letting go of everything that doesn't serve us. Breathing slowly, allowing our systems, our bodies to calm. Inhaling, exhaling, allowing our bodies, our minds, our hearts to be peace. Inhaling, exhaling, embracing that divinity within our minds, our bodies, our hearts, our spirits. I invite you to focus, focus the mind on this present moment, the here and the now, becoming fully aware of our being, our existence, our connection to the divine, to all that is. We are not our past. We are not our future. We are consciousness experiencing this present moment. In this moment, we meditate. We meditate on the truth that we are divine. That we are an individualized expression of the universe. That we are manifesting and expressing simultaneously. We are light. We are destiny. We are the peacemaker. We are the vehicle for compassion. We realize we are not merely a creation of the divine, but the divine itself. We are not merely dwelling in this universe. We are the universe. We are not merely surrounded by divine force. We are divine force. And we are not merely living by principle. We are principle. And we are grateful. We're grateful for this realization, for this truth. We are grateful for the divinity within ourselves and for the light we each are. We are grateful for the destiny we are fulfilling and the compassion that we are expressing. We are grateful for unity. We are grateful for the unity that we are a part of, for the love that we are manifesting in that unity, in the connection. And we are grateful for the healing that we are experiencing and through our experiencing, bringing healing and wholeness into this world. Take a nice breath, please. Raise those shoulders to those ears again. Nice big sigh. And in this appreciation moment, may this time we've spent together today in the nature of healing 
and this centering and reflection guide us on our journeys of self-discovery, of growth, of spiritual unfoldment, and lead us to a greater peace, joy, and fulfillment. This time of the nature of healing is a time to celebrate life and love, wholeness, our individual and collective journeys. I'd love to hear from you, your thoughts, your questions. If you'd like to share your own healing journey, you can find me at Bolts of Love and at Unity in Edinburgh. My name is Jen Shepard. Many blessings. Take care.